Hello, 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 and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin, known as the Dream Decipherer, and this is Dream Your Life, Live Your Dream Live, where we talk about all things dreams. Now, today, we're going to look at dreams from a slightly different perspective um, and look at how dreams have influenced art, um, whether it be visual arts like paintings or literature. Um, could be music as well. Um, the song yesterday by the Beatles was um, actually came to Paul McCartney in a dream. So dreams have really been a part of art um, in various forms for time out of mind. Um, I, to look back, way back in history, you have, uh, be even before the Greeks and Romans, you had um, I believe, it, and I'm hoping, if I'm incorrect, that I'll be corrected by someone. The um, Quran was written as the result of a vision by the Prophet Muhammad where the angel Gabriel bids him to speak. And the Quran was born. In um, other dreams, you have, in other traditions, you have um, dreams of Jacob's ladder where angels are coming and going on a, to heaven and back to earth. You have Joseph interpreting dreams for a pharaoh. And if I'm not mistaken, in the Gita, which is the um, Hindu holy book, there are also dreams mentioned. So dreams have been influencing um, our thinking and our behavior for time out of mind. And not only does it give um, uh, meat to a story, make it more juicy, but it can be a way to gain insight into a person's thoughts, into their inner lives, what's going on with them, to give them a more richer um, feeling for a particular character or um, in a story. So moving, more, uh, moving forward, looking at the Victorians, for instance, in the, the 1800s, they were absolutely potty about dreams and they understood that while dreams were often a jumble of the, the things that were going on in our day-to-day -day lives, they also revealed our deepest fears and desires. Um, and they had a lot of uh, uh, <laughs> neuroses around that, quite frankly. But nevertheless, um, you know, throughout history, we had moving into the 20th century, uh, we had Freud and Jung who looked at dreams as uh, a way to really determine what's going on with the person in their inner lives. Or as Freud said, dreams are the royal road to the unconscious um, and what's really going on with us. But today we're going to take a brief look at um, some authors, three authors, all of them women. Um, that wasn't uh, deliberate, but that's just the way it worked out and then take a brief look at how dreams have influenced visual arts, paintings. So first we're going to look at the, the two Bronte sisters, Emily and Charlotte, and we'll start with Emily and her famous book, Wuthering Heights. Now, Emily uses the uh, dreams very sparingly uh, in her writing, but uh, those dreams, the few dreams, were very, very significant because it impacted the direction of the, of the characters subsequent to those dreams. Now, um, there were two dreams in particular that were significant, and one was uh, the narrator of the story, a Mr. Lockwood, dreamt that he was locked in a room that once belonged to another character in the book, Catherine, who was long dead. Uh, the he dreams that uh, he's trying to get out of this room and this child, this Catherine, um, tries to get in to, at him through the window and he does everything he can to, to get uh, away from her or to keep her out. And it's an interesting insight and maybe one of these days I'll actually do an an analysis of, of some of the uh, books that um, are out and about. But he's, there's something, what is he actually rejecting? I guess is the question here in that dream. What is really he rejecting about his inner life? But nevertheless, 
the there's another dream that's very significant and has an, a major impact on one of the characters um, changing the whole direction of the the interaction of the two these two characters the second dream is about is from the character Catherine and she dreams that she's cast out of heaven she's thrown back onto earth into a place where um, her childhood love um, is Heathcliff um, spent their childhood together uh, but as she's recounting this dream kind of in the stream of consciousness way um, Heathcliff the other character overhears her and says while she's saying that she is uh, she would be degraded in some way if she were to marry Heathcliff over um, her fiance Linton. But he flees in an upset over that before she could actually, which before she actually added that she really and truly and deeply loved Heathcliff. Um, so the action of the the subsequent actions of the book would completely change because he only heard half the story now if we turn from that and look at um emily's sister charlotte charlotte's quite different she uses dreams a lot um in her her book jane eyre and the what's interesting about how the dreams in this book um are significant in that the main character Jane Eyre is always very controlled always never showing her feelings always doing saying and doing the right thing but her dreams show otherwise um, that she's not this calm cool collected person that she's actually boiling over with emotions but she represses them and the only way you can get insight into what's really going on with her is actually through um, her dreams so this her dreams always centered on um, a relationship a particular relationship she had and how it was doomed um, with this relationship that with Rochester the other main character um, either he's walking away and she can't catch up to him or she's climbing ruins of her home um, and she sees him off in the distance where she can't reach him and even after her um, wed actual wedding is ruined and she actually runs away, She's Jane Eyre is still plagued by dreams of being in Rochester's arms, her lover's arms. And she's determined to, to get him out of her mind and off her back forever, but she can't. She can't stop loving him and she can't forget him. Um, and that is the overarching theme throughout the book. Now, if we turn to Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, um, it's almost like the, it was the Jane Eyre story, but retold by a different person. Um, then there was a famous line that said, last night I dreamt I went to Manderley again. And this dream is, uh, sets the mood, sets the tone for the entire book. You know, it's dark, it's forbidding, it's, which is very Victorian. Um, and it shows the mental state or emotional state of the, of the main character, Rebecca. Uh, dreams in this particular book, again, aren't used very much, but they are very significant in terms of explaining um, emotions, um, things from the past, uh, other things that are going on beneath the surface, the appearance of things. But it's not just the Victorians who use dreams as stratagems for, um, for their books. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is based on um, the, Car the um, Henry Harry Potter is actually influenced by um, a dream uh, in this particular book so and which shows that you know a psychic dimension um, of the character Alice's Adventures in Wonderland um, some people think that Lewis Carroll was actually on drugs <laughs> when he um, did this wrote this book 
but um, Lewis Carroll actually used dreams as a way to make observations and connections in waking life so that you know what seemed absurd and unreal actually um, explained in a wonky sort of way what was going on in, in daily waking life. Um, going back to ancient Greece, the Iliad, the, the epic poem by Homer, um, is you uses the stratagem of a false dream to ex persuade Agamemnon to attack Troy. So, you know, again, the actions are of, of people or characters are directly influenced by dreams. The other books include War and Peace, Crime and Punishment, the famous book 1984 by George Orwell, even A Christmas Carol which uses Scrooge's dreams of the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future to um, move the character along in the story. And finally, um, I mentioned Freud before, but The Interpretation of Dreams, which is a seminal work by Sigmund Freud. So, as you see, even today, um, dreams are influencing the art world in various different ways. Now, I'm going to take a quick look at works of art, because being that I couldn't actually do slides of um, various works of art, but we'll talk about visual art and how um, dreams have been uh, used to inspire artists to um, express themselves in general. Um, from godly visions to ghastly nightmares, dreams have been represented in art um, since really the Middle Ages and even before that. Um, during the Renaissance, they were, you had people writing um, about um, well, basing their, their art around things from the ancient world in Greece. Um, philosophers use dreams to, um, as a means to escape the physical realm and to enter into the world of fantasy or endless possibilities because you're free of the fetters of your own bodies. Um, even in, in religious art, the um, sleeping people um, often had an implication with regard to um, spiritually being asleep or awake, as the case may be. So, you know, it can, it can, it can be a mixture of fantasy, eroticism, death, the occult, all kinds of things, um, because you're released from the day-to-day the -day, um, attitudes and uh, limitations of a physical body. You can do and be anything you like. Um, and the, the writings of Freud actually inspired people, the surrealists, who um, use dreams as a means of, of showing the, the surrealness of life, um, particularly in the run-up to the First World War. So the unconscious had become a, a creative tool, if you will, um, to give unexpected meanings and context into oneself into uh, our deepest fears and desires and uh, not necessarily to do anything about them but at least to recognize um, that there is more to life than what we see and experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So, and I realize that um, my depiction of art is, is very sketchy and very brief but um, being that I can't actually go through specific works of art um, here as part of my life, it's a bit difficult. Maybe I'll actually do a seminar about that and release it afterwards. Who knows? If that's an idea that you think would work, let me know. So there you have it. Um, dreams have been the source of inspiration uh, and action uh, for the art, the art world, whether it be visual arts, written arts, song, dance, whatever. Um, dreams have had a massive influence on our, how we react with the world, how we interact with the world, and how um, people who are involved in art in some form express themselves. So what perhaps are you missing out in terms of expressing your artistry by not paying attention to your dreams. Think about that. Thanks so much for watching and listening. 
have a great day and rest of the weekend. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>